Hello, it's Duncan. Today we're going to look at a neat trick to make value classes easier to work with in Colin. In our last instalment, we looked at reducing the amount that could go wrong by replacing a parameter to our item constructor with, instead of a string, a non-blank string. So that when we create an item, we don't have to check that the string is non-blank because the type is non-blank string and we can only ever create non-blank strings with blank string. Now this doesn't prevent us from having to deal with blank strings, but what it does do is it moves them up in our code base so that we can pass a non-blank string from the place where we read all the way down to the place where we construct, rather than passing a string and then having to deal with the fact that that could be wrong. So our error has moved from the constructor here for item, in fact, in its init method where we were throwing, into persisting where we pass the string. So that's here. Here we create a non-blank string, and this is the point where we know that it could fail. And we're forced to deal with the fact that it could fail because non-blank string, the only way we can build one is using this invoke, which will return a null, so we're forced to deal with the null. Now things like non-blank string are often called tiny types because they're tiny. All they do is carry a type from one place to another. But they're a little bit of a pain in Kotlin because we can't just treat this non-blank string as if it was a string, we have to go and talk to its value. So looking again in item, You'll see here we say type for now type for requires a string, but here we can't pass a non-blank string in place for string. We have to get the value out of it. Now that's a little bit of a shame. What we could do though, in this case is we could look at type for and we could say that this should take a non-blank string. Now, if we do that back here, we can just pass the name in itself and in item type, then we could get the value out at every point. There's quite a neat trick in Kotlin we can play though, and that's because things like contains and starts with are actually methods on char sequence. So if we could make our non-blank string a char sequence, then we could call them directly. And we can, because what we can say is we wish our non-blank string to implement char sequence. And how's it going to do it? By delegation to the value inside it. Now this has only worked, I think, since Kotlin 1.7. But now if we look inside our item type, you'll see that this all compiles. And this is calling an extension function on char sequence rather than the method on string. So that's a nice little trick, which for strings at least reduces the number of times we have to go and get the value out of a tiny type. So an item type, name contains and so on. Okay, let's just check that actually builds and runs. Good. We'll just go back to non-blank string and check that there are no more references to the value. You can see there's one here where we need a string, so we need to go and get the value. We could make this an item to map of map of string to char sequence. Um, I'm not sure that's worthwhile. And then we have a little bit of test code here. And then we've got non-blank string talking to its own internals. Okay, so I think we're done here. Let's commit that. Okay. And that's it. Short and sweet. We can only implement interfaces this way and char sequences are most useful of those that I know, but you could also try implementing collection types as well. And Kotlin 1.7.2 allows generics and value classes. So there should be scope to write a generic non-empty list. In the next episode, we'll look at adding other operations to value classes. Please subscribe to see that and consider buying the book that I wrote with that price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thank you for watching.